this is this morning's job. We're taking this fuse board out, new fuse board going in. The ball's being replaced with a junction box. And the new ball's coming down a bit lower, around about this height here. This is the ball that's going in. On another video, you might have seen me making this, but I had some dimensions for the job, so I've pre-made this back at my back at my place. Hopefully, all being well, that will just lift up. This will take the place of the uh, existing fuse box, and then trunk it down to the new one. Hopefully, that goes in without too much trouble. Uh, fingers crossed. I've not not cocked up on on any of the measurements, but we'll uh, we'll find out very soon. This one's stripped out at the moment. I'm labelling up the cables as I go. Uh, I'm just giving them the same number reference that I had on the original board. It's the original board's labelled up, so it just makes it easier for me to put that back together later. So you can see me cutting a hole in the plasterboard ceiling with a multi-tool now. I can't get access to the ceiling space in this garage, but I need to put a little bit of slack down on some of the cables and just kind of link them up. So by making a hole above where the, the main junction box is gonna go, you can see I can get my arm up there and I can free up a little bit of the cabling. Although I've cut quite a big hole, it will be completely covered by the junction box when it goes in, so none of that will end up being seen. That's helped me with a little bit of slack on some of these cables. What are they fixing? do a few little tests on these now just to make sure of a couple of things and then uh, we'll look to get the actual board up. I'm just going to do a quick end-to-end -end test on the ring circuits. I'm doing this just in case when I strip the board out and, and done my labelling that I've got any of it wrong. Uh, I want to make sure I've got the ends of my ring identified correctly. I think there was maybe four ring mains in, on this job. So there was a, a few circuits to test just to make sure I've got them paired up right before you know attempting to put them back in the new board. So I'm just stripping off uh, parts of the existing wiring system that are going to be in the way of the new board. There's a few bits and pieces. Uh, you've got this, what is that? That's a, I think that's a few spur for the boiler maybe, but that was in the way of where my trunk is going to go. And also a bit further down, you can't quite see it in shot at the moment, but there's a, a thermostat on the wall. But I'll get all these whipped off now, uh, and then once uh, the new board's in, I can readjust their height and, and put them back together again. Right, in with the new board now. Uh, getting a bit of help here from the homeowner who's a friend of mine. It's a little bit too heavy to hold up on my own. It's not something I've really thought of too much when building it, but uh, I'm glad he was there because I'm, I'm not sure how easily I would have got it up there. But once it's, I'm just getting a couple of fixings in it now. It doesn't need too many because it's all made of metal uh, and it's bolted together doesn't need that many fixings and it will just you know it, it will support itself really so it gives me a hand until I've got most of them in and, and then that's it ready to go. Oh. <laughs> 
I've got it, don't worry. <laughs> don't worry, it won't fall. You lost the interest quick, fucking hell. You I said you lost the interest quick. <laughs> If you haven't seen it already, there's two other videos on my channel. In one video, uh, you see me uh, building the fuse board, so cutting on the trunking, assembling the board and the junction box, and there's also another one that uh, is probably a couple of videos back on the on the channel, but uh, that shows me pre-wiring it all, so wiring the fuse board and getting all the, the cabling uh, wired into the junction box above. So if you're interested in seeing how that was built, uh, have a look in the description, there'll be a couple of links there to the videos. Gold bars, two gold bars. Are you having one? Uh, maybe. You're not allowed. Keep fat. Or keep fit. Okay, that is, that's level with the ceiling. But the ceiling's not level, so how does that look? trying to decide here whether to, to mount the board straight and level uh, or make it in line with the ceiling because the ceiling's out of level. It's hard to hard to work out what looks better. Uh, I think in the end I went with making the top box in line with the ceiling and, and having the trunk and level coming down. So they, pro they probably look slightly out of square but sometimes you just have to kind of work with, with what you've got there and, and make the best of it. I love those little Stabila little boat levels you, you see me using. They're like, a, I call them scaffolders levels, I don't know if they are or not, but they've got a really decent magnet on them. And they come with a 10 year guarantee that they stay level. I think I've had that one. I must have had that for about 10 years now. They're, they're, they're brilliant tools, I wouldn't be without them. They are quite expensive compared to a lot of the, the cheaper ones you can get in wholesalers, but I reckon they're well worth the money, so yeah, I wouldn't be without these. Yeah, all right, we'll get the rest of the fixings in here. Get this screwed back. And that's, uh, that's that part done. That's uh, the board mounted up, so I've got to get the tails rooted around into that now. You can see my cables coming to the top of there. I've just got to put them away into the dim rail terminals and then a little mishap this clash with the trunking. So I'm going to raise that up slightly and then just refix that frost that on the wall. So just got to have a little figure out where to bring the tails in. I'm not sure whether to come in the side or the bottom. It doesn't look like space to come up the back of the dim rail, but there's also not enough room there to turn the cables into there properly. So I'll have a little, a little think about that. So as you can see, I managed to get the tails into the side of the ball in the end. I didn't film, uh, you know, running them in there or anything like that. It's pretty boring anyway. There was a, there's an isolator in the meter box outside, so with that shut off, I can I can work on them without any issue. But yeah, they come up into the side of the board and bent round okay, and then I'm just putting the frost stack back on the wall now that uh, was removed because it was in the way, and just tidying up a few little bits before I move on to working on the junction box. So it's a nice straightforward job now of just stripping back these cables getting them all to the length I need and putting them away in the in the correct dim rail terminals. I've already made a list of the uh, the terminals I need to get them put into. So yeah, it's just a, a straightforward job now, getting this sorted out and trying to make it look reasonably neat.
so that's what we've got so far. So I've just got to get that armour cable there into the side of the box. They're joined. I've got to blank that, then, like the, the hole in the top of there. I'll cut a little piece of uh, plastic lid in to fit around them cables just to, to keep the IP rate in there. Yeah, power's on. A little bit of tidying up and uh, RCD testing, then I'm done. I've just found a bit of old trunk in there, so I've cut this up to make a little, little sort of plate to cover up the hole I've got in the top of the ball. I cut it to fit round where the cables come through. In hindsight, I wish I'd found a different way to bring the cables in there. Uh, it would have probably been better with some stuffing glands. I was going to do that originally, but I thought it would be a struggle getting all those cables through, you know, three or four stuffing glands whilst trying to hold it all up in place. What I'm doing does seal the top of the box fine. It might not look great, but it serves a purpose and and it works. But, you know, if I was to do it again, I'd probably find a different way of doing it. So there you are. So that's that in there. I've just got to put a fly lead in for the, uh, for the lid. That's this. This is just going to fix to the lid of the box and that's that that's that all in there so i'm just uh talking up all the all the terminals now this ball's been in transit uh, a few times from my place to the job site so everything needs a, a tighten and a check so that's what i'm carrying out now this is a torque driver each of these terminals has got a specific torque rating that it has to be set to so when you hear that click that means it's at the uh, rating that it's supposed to be. Right, just a little bit of testing to do now. I've got to do an RCD test on each RCBO, an earth loop test on each circuit, just to make sure we've got uh, we've got an earth in, in each circuit. And then uh, I think that's about it, really. A bit of labelling, then done. Right. Testing's all done. I've gone round, done a loop test on each circuit, uh, fixed a few little issues that were causing the power to trip. So, yeah, testing's completed. A little bit of labelling to do, and that uh, is it done. Of that board. I like to take a photo of the circuits in there just in case I get any I'm writing information down wrong on my test certs. Right, that's uh, that's all installed. I've got the joint box there down into the board. I've got a couple of things to do missing a, uh, a cover strap for that joint there and a cover strap for that joint there but I'll, uh, I've will i got to laminate up a, a fuse board chart for you so when I come back to drop that off I'll put that on but uh, yeah that's the job completed and done <laughs>